February 26th. This is my movie, I Want Abs. This is the start of the movie. And I'm walking over to a friend photographer who's gonna be taking my before picture. I'm going through all so sorts of emotions at the moment. I'm nervous, I'm excited. Uh, I'm not totally stoked to be taking most of my clothes off and getting a professional photographer to shoot me. But I know that it's necessary. After this, that's it. I'm gonna start exercising, following the protocol, eating right, doing everything I need to do to get rock hard abs. And so that is exciting for me because like many people, I've been putting off fitness and procrastinating. And I'm tired of procrastinating, so I'm doing something about it. But I'm still kind of nervous. <laughs> It'll be good though. I mean, what do I have to be nervous of? If I don't have a six pack at the end of this, there, there will be no movie. No pressure, right? My name is Sergei, and I grew up in an extremely health-conscious family. My Russian parents didn't much care for conforming to society, which made for an interesting childhood. For the bulk of my youth, I ate nothing but raw vegan food, slept on a wooden plank instead of a mattress, took polar plunges in frozen lakes, and hiked across America while foraging for wild edibles. Those were some exciting times that vastly expanded my worldview and helped me shape some core beliefs about the importance of being healthy and fit. Never in a million years did I ever think that I would have to worry about being chubby. But I was wrong. Despite living what I considered a healthy, active lifestyle, I started getting fat. At age 30, life stress, relaxed eating choices, and a slowing metabolism appear to be the perfect weight-gaining recipe. Seeing my reflection in the mirror was becoming increasingly more painful as it depicted a dude with a protruding gut, flabby love handles, and a double chin. Getting on a scale was equally unpleasant as it produced a figure skirting around the 200 pound mark. 187. More disturbing still was the mental process caused by gaining weight. Putting on the pounds was crushing my self-esteem, stealing my happiness, and making my general attitude towards life shitty. I was stuck in a vicious cycle. Feeling heavy killed any motivation I had to work out, and the lack of exercise added more weight, stress, and burden to my life. I observed my friends who were in their 40s and 50s and noticed that many of them had weight issues. Through friendly conversations, I learned that working out at 40 or 50 was even more cumbersome than it was at 30 for me. These observations ultimately led me to an epiphany. 
At no point in time will it be easier to get in shape than now. Every year that I wait to make a change will make it exponentially harder to lose the weight and achieve my fitness goals. Shortly after this realization, I was cruising around on the internet and I typed before and after fitness photos into a search bar. Right out the gate, I was struck by how profound some people's transformations were. Not only did their bodies look more toned and muscular, but their eyes seemed brighter, their posture straighter, and their smiles wider. I caught myself on the thought that the people in the after photos looked generally younger and happier than their old selves. I was also taken aback at how inspirational a simple photo can be. Just by looking at an image, an image that was free of words, I felt a strong drive to start exercising and change my ways. Those photos lit a fire under my ass and gave me the motivation I needed to say enough is enough and tackle my personal fitness goals once and for all. I craved hardcore stamina. I desired a V-shaped torso, a strong core, muscular arms, and solid legs. I wanted abs. I desperately wanted abs. I vowed then and there that I would find a way to get them. I was pumped and ready to go. The only trouble was I didn't know where I was going or how I was going to get there. Hey Sergey, how you doing? Intent on using myself as a lab rat in my own fitness experiment, I hired a film crew and started making this documentary. My name is Jared Cruz. I'm a professional photographer and I'll be taking the before and after photos for Sergey's documentary, I Want Abs. So uh, I imagine I'll be about here? Yeah, that's great. Line up about there. Maybe just scoot this way just a bit. Cool. Looking good. Cool. So I guess right. I should get into the monkey soon. Yep. All right. Bring it on. Here I go. Ah. <laughs> oh God. All right, how'd it go? That fit? It's my first time ever in a Speedo. <sighs> I'm just creating a lot of blackmail material right now, aren't I? All right. Knowing full well how easy it'd be to lie to myself about my progress, I thought it'd be a good idea to snap a few before photos to keep myself accountable and on track. In addition to accountability, I hope that those unflattering photos would also give me motivation to continue training should I ever find myself in a workout low. After thoroughly measuring my entire body, I paid my personal trainer a visit and had him conduct a body composition test in order to figure out my weight and total body fat percentage. What is a body comp? A body comp is just your percentage body fat. Uh, I like all of my clients to be between 10 and 20% body fat. To give you an idea, the typical American is 37%. That's horrific, that's horrible. Less than 8% of Americans are under 20%. You wanna be 10 to 20% body fat. That's where optimal health is achieved. How I achieve a body comp is a caliper test. I'll take five measurements, and then I have a little chart that gives me your age, and I can extrapolate and, and figure out within one percentage point of what your body comp is. I like using body comp because it's very accurate. I've done thousands of them. A lot of people use body mass index or BMI, which is only accurate in about 50% of the people. So I have you at 22% body fat. I like to have all of my clients between 10 and 20%. Cool. Okay, I think a great goal over the next 12 weeks is to get you to 12%. So we want to lose about 10% of your body fat. What's your actual physical weight? Or should we do a weigh-in? Let's do a weigh-in. Let's do a weigh-in. Yeah. <laughs> I did one already, but uh, my scale might have not been as well, let's, let's use this scale right over here. I got I'm gonna let you bring it over. 200. That's coming. Let's go 150 and move this to this. So it looks like we got 188. Cool. Yeah. I've actually gained a pound since okay. <laughs> my last weigh in. Okay. Well, we're going to talk about dietary intake. That's real important. So 188. These are just biomarkers that we're going to use from now on over the next 12 weeks. Is it hard to get abs? 
Yes, it is very hard to get abs. It's a, it's a lifestyle change for most people. Their genetics play a part of it, but um, <clears throat> for most people, if you really want that six pack abs, it's a lifestyle change. So it's gonna be, nutrition is huge, activity obviously is huge, um, but nutrition is probably the biggest component. And then outside of that, it's also taking care of yourself through exercise and proper rest um, to uh, maintain a good hormone balance as well. I think anybody can get abs so long as they have the metabolic base necessary to do so. Um, one thing that I find with the clients I work with is that a great deal of people, particularly women um, and many men, are metabolically compromised from things like persistent dieting, eating the wrong foods, they've become very insensitive to insulin. So I think the easy answer is that yes, it is very <laughs> difficult to get abs. Getting abs is incredibly easy if you have the right program design. I specialize in functional training where you utilize multiple muscle groups in a three-dimensional fashion. You want to alter the pattern. Basically, uh, you have a lot of people that just do one exercise, they do crunches, uh, or as an example, you want to do a lot of different exercises, you want to be consistent uh, in your program design. You want to have uh, a program that works everything and brings balance to the system. Also, abs are made in the kitchen too. It's your dietary intake. You can have titanium abs, and if you're 28% body fat, you're not gonna have that cut look. So you wanna get down, if you're a man, around 10% woman, uh, 12 to 15%. Body comp is really critical to actually see those abs, and I think that's what a lot of people don't get. Having a good functional training program that lasts about 50 minutes, three or four times a week and you will get titanium abs if you are consistent with your program and you have the right dietary intake. That's critical, guaranteed, 100%. It's March 6th. I'm rolling over to my first training session with John Hacker. I'm hoping that he's gonna kick my butt today. And I'm really excited about this. I can't wait to start working out. As you can see, I'm growing out a beard. I have a six o'clock shadow going on. And I have decided that for the entire 12 weeks of this project, I'm gonna be growing my beard to show time. So hopefully by the end of the 12 weeks, I'll have rock hard abs as well as a big beard to prove that I did this and that I'm real. All right, Sergey, what up? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. Are you ready? I am so excited. First exercise we're gonna do is a little exercise called the Roman twist. You take this ball down, right over there, and I want you to sit on the ball. Bridge out, center of the neck, center of the ball. Like this? Yep, put your hands up straight, hips up, and you're gonna rotate the ball under your shoulders. That's it. Good, Ooh. 15 to 20. Fantastic. The closer you put your feet together, the more challenging it's gonna be. But don't put them so close that you're falling off the ball. Always stay in control, my friend. Good job. Going into this project, I was well aware that it would be difficult to get a six pack. Every person that I interviewed told me pretty much the same thing. There are no shortcuts or quick fixes. If you want abs, you have to put in the time and effort. After discussing my goals with my personal trainer, he helped me devise a three month program to help me get the results I was after. Over the course of the next 12 weeks, I would be engaging in various functional fitness workouts three to five times per week for about 50 minutes per session. I specifically chose functional fitness as my workout method because I wanted to get fit in a way that would help me move through life with more ease and not just enable me to lift heavy weights at the gym. How's that core doing? <laughs> Feel it? Feel it? <laughs> Keep going. Do a couple more. Do a couple more. Yeah, we're freaking out the body in this now. Did I mention I hate ab exercises? <laughs> oh, you're gonna love them soon. And rest. On this one, where'd you feel it the most? Actually, in my abs, in my lower abs. Yeah, that's what we want to hit, below the belly button right yeah. here. That's a really hard area to hit. This exercise is an exercise that would get that. I mean, it's amazing, but it's, you're not really doing all that much, but it's... You're doing a lot. I can tell, I see people at the other places where I work that uh, just do crunches all the time, yeah. which is the worst thing you can do. 
Uh, they'll be really strong up here and then they'll just boop. <laughs> they'll be really weak uh -huh. below the abs. Again, you want to have balance to the system. You want to attack everything. Yeah. So, I mean, you just brought up a really good point because while the movie is called I Want Abs, it's not just about abs. Mm -hmm. I don't want to have a rock card six pack and then weak, dysfunctional everything else. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Absolutely. Absolutely. Ah, ah, ah. Well, actually, the best training program is one that attacks your weaker areas. You want to bring balance to the whole system, and that's what this whole project is all about, bringing balance to the system. Any training program should be like that. You want to attack your weak areas. You want to just be really strong and fit and healthy. That's what most people want. So yeah. doing this is going to give me all around, like... Health and wellness. Health and wellness, but also a proportionate ripped... Yeah, as a side effect, as a side effect. You are powerful beyond measure. I think you just got me ready for my second set. Second set, let's do it. You are powerful beyond measure, my friend. We all are, all human beings are. So I just completed my first workout session with John, and I gotta say, even though I didn't do anything too crazy, I am worked. Apparently my entire core is weak, and it needs a lot of work. So I'm gonna continue on this path, and hopefully, like he says, get titanium abs. In addition to my workouts with John, I felt like I needed a little bit of supplementary help in order to reach my fitness goals. I hired a second personal trainer who specialized in kettlebell training. Unlike a traditional dumbbell, a kettlebell is engineered so that its weight is off-centered. Because of this off-centered design, a kettlebell recruits more stabilizing muscles and works your body more like a concentration camp than a piece of gym equipment. Thus, kettlebell training is considered by many as the ultimate form of functional fitness. Nick was just saying that when you get a heavier kettlebell, you can use more of the weight to counterbalance yourself on a pistol. And so that actually makes the movement slightly easier. So for this exercise, the lighter the weight, the more difficult that it is. As we talked about last time with the cleans, when we do the alternating, it becomes less of that hip hinge movement. Okay, it's more of that straight up and straight down, that corkscrew down, corkscrew up. If I'm doing an alternating movement, what, what's going to happen? One's going to stay where it is. Okay, so getting that full hip hinge isn't really going to work. So you know how when you watch Sergey 
do his cleans and his snatches, he's almost kind of straight up and down for a lot of it. All right, you're gonna do a lot of the same thing. Okay, so you're really, you can still absorb the hips, you're still able to connect and deflect a little bit, all right? But it's just, that kind of soft, soft movement there, all right? Fork screw down, fork screw up. So, all right, when you can come up, catch it, it's gonna be, so now I'm gonna go down right hand, absorb and come right back up, all right? So I just, fork screw down, up. Okay? There's gonna be a little bit of a twist, but you gotta be strong. You gotta be strong in that fixation, all right, that lock out there. So, break, two, go. Just finished a kettlebell workout which I do because it helps me build muscle and it's also really good cardio so it's gonna be burning that extra fat off my body today was a fundamentals class where we really get to do all the movements and and learn how to do it right and learn how to do it safe um, and it was amazing because today I was kind of in a funk I was sort of tired of the diet and um, you know just kind of hit a low point and doing something active has once again lifted my mood and I feel all around happy and well and energized. So if anything else, the kettlebell work workout was good for that. So what I want you to do, I'm gonna throw it to you, you're gonna catch it, do a, um, a half squat and then throw it back. All right, ready? Let's do it. Half squat. Yeah. Good. Woo. You're eyeing the ball. Good job. Eyeing the ball. Excellent. As adults, we don't really play catch very much. This is great for hand-eye coordination. Balance and reaction time. Good. Man, you haven't fallen off yet. Most people have fallen off by this time. Bring your hips in a little bit. Stay in alignment. Bring the, the right foot over a little bit more. A little bit, there you go. Feeling that in the trunk? Oh yeah. In the core? Yeah, 15 to 20 each side. Remember the body will want to cheat. Don't let the body cheat, man. Yeah, these are fun, man. These will give you titanium obliques. These will take care of the muffin tops. The body wants to cheat so bad. It does, it does. You're better off to do 15 in good, good form than 25, not so much. Five, keep going, six. Feeling it? Seven, eight, we're gonna go 12, nine, 10, yeah, two more. 11, last one. Now, flip around, feet that way. Ha ha ha, you're thermoregulating now. Watch out for the muscle ball right there. One, good, two, three. All right, rest, that's good. So this is a little fact finding. It's the first time we've done this. We have muscle failure. Muscle failure is success. Is there any negative repercussions of potentially not resting enough? Yeah, you get hurt. You get over um, overtraining syndrome. Mm -hmm. Classic symptoms are uh, fatigue, feeling kind of run down. Um, crankiness, um, not sleeping at night, overeating or undereating, and you're gonna you're gonna achieve so much more benefit if you train properly and you're not training all the time at a, at a really high level. Because if you push yourself, you know not only are you, are you, get, are you have the possibility of having that overtraining, but you're also your risk of injury goes up.
keep your elbows right back here. Don't move the elbows forward. Let's do eight to 10. Elbows all right? Good job. Let me give you a nice long rest. Skull crushers, do not live up to the name of the exercise. Do not crush your skull. That's it. You got it, man. One of the really important reasons for this counterbalance that I'm giving you this 110 pounds is it does take a lot of the stress off of the lower back and really helps you focus on the, on the rectus abdominals or the lower abs. Excellent and rest. Good job, man. Oh, man. <laughs> It's really amazing. I've come into the gym, I had like zero energy. I thought I was gonna take a nap for three sets today. And after just doing a few sets of this, I can feel the energy flowing back in. Wow. Yeah! That's how it works, man. You get your second, your second win. Get back into that groove. Today is April 2nd. I've been doing this project for exactly one month and so I decided that today would be a really good day to sit down and spend a couple minutes discussing how I feel and going through everything. Before going into this project, I was experiencing some symptoms that were somewhat alarming as far as my health is concerned. I was feeling very shaky, I was having a lot of trouble sleeping, very low energy, like my energy was very erratic. All of those symptoms have completely gone away. I feel alive. I have this certain spring in my step that wasn't there before. I can see my stomach shrinking. Like, check this out. You know, this might not look like abs yet, but literally a month ago, this was out to here, you know? And now when I pinch my stomach, there's a lot less to pinch. My arms are getting bigger. Look at this. My arms are getting bigger. I noticed that my clothes are fitting better than ever before and I'm finding that I'm wearing shirts and pants that I haven't worn in about a year. When I go to cinch my belt, the hole that I normally cinch to is too loose, so I go down two or three holes past that. After a month, I'm moving differently. My thighs aren't rubbing together as much as they did, which I never really told anybody about because I was a, a little bit embarrassed, but I was, I was starting to chafe in between my thighs because they, I guess they were getting really big. That's not happening anymore. Basically the routine is that I've been exercising five days a week. I've been training with a kettlebell guy. I've been training with my core workout trainer. I've been running a little bit on the side. Most days it's just 55 minutes of exercise and that's it. And I wake up the next day feeling sore. My abs are hurting. My muscles all over the body are sore. I'm shocked with the amount of exercise that this protocol requires because it's much less than I originally thought. Diet plays all the role in getting abs, and the reason why is that everybody has them. Like, you have abs. You, you wouldn't be able to support yourself through activities such as walking if you didn't have abs. The issue is whether or not they're visible. So, you can make the lines or the cuts in your abs deeper through training, but you need to reduce body fat accordingly to make them visible. The biggest mistake that clients will come to me that they'll make is they'll get into this huge caloric um, deficit. If you do that, if you starve yourself, I guarantee you're gonna gain uh, a stored energy. You're gonna put on body fat. I've had clients that were eating less than a thousand calories a day that were 30% body fat. You have to eat. You gotta feed the machine. By feeding the machine, you will liberate that stored energy. The first thing I tell everybody, stay away from anything white. Don't eat uh, white potatoes, sugar, bread, flour. You absolutely don't, you don't want to pig out on meat. That's real important. So essentially you, you want to eat a lot of vegetables. Um, smoothies are good. Your largest meal should be breakfast. Smallest meal should be dinner. And for the first month during the initial conditioning phase, you want to go to bed a little hungry. It's critical to have a breakfast period. You want to wake up really, really hungry. When you start waking up hungry, that's telling me that your metabolic rate is going up. Uh, so that should be your biggest meal. And then eat every three hours, shortening the meals uh, as you get to dinner. Dinner, again, should be your smallest meal. And let's say you eat at 6 o'clock. 
uh, then you shouldn't eat anything until six o'clock the next morning. You want to not really have anything in your digestive tract when you're sleeping. Before embarking on this fitness journey, my traveling lifestyle and heavy workload enabled me to develop several bad dietary habits. As it was before, I frequently skipped eating breakfast in order to get to work a little faster. Once at work, I forgot about food for hours until my body gave me the I need food now signal. In a hungry state, I often settled for less than perfect food choices and regularly gorged myself until I was stuffed. Then I would take another massive break from eating until I was once again starving and ready to overindulge. Around 9, 10, or 11 at night, I'd get hungry again and eat a huge dinner. Then I'd go to sleep as my body started digesting my last meal. This type of feeding schedule was like an anvil for my metabolism. It slowed it down to a crawl and definitely contributed to my weight gain. It also made me feel sluggish and old. Ironically, in an effort to save time and be more productive, I actually started feeling crappy, which significantly hindered the amount of work I could do in a day. By contrast, my new diet, which emphasizes eating a big breakfast followed by reasonably sized meals every two to three hours throughout the day, keeps my metabolism high and my blood sugar level. As a result, I feel more energetic, more satiated, have fewer mood swings, and am able to liberate stored energy, aka fat, at a steady rate. This way of eating has also reminded me how pleasant it is to cook my own meals. Cooking at home lets me be creative and allows me to make art in the form of food. It forces me to unplug from all the electronics that are constantly competing for my attention and helps me spend time with the people that I love. It seems counterintuitive, but this routine also helps me save tons of time. Every day of this project, my sister comes over to help me make my meals. Together we spend about an hour cutting up various fruits and vegetables, we make delicious soups and salads using the best, healthiest ingredients, and devise new recipes to keep things interesting. Within this single hour, we manage to make all of our meals for the entire day, including snacks. Once we're done, we're done. All of our food gets neatly packed into glass jars, then when hunger strikes, all we have to do is open the jar of food and enjoy it. This literally saves me hours per week as hunting for three or four individual meals daily takes up a lot of time. As for the contents of my diet, my food hasn't changed all that much. The majority of what I eat consists of raw fruits and vegetables. This means lots of big, big salads and lots of ripe fruit as nibbles. I also like to eat cooked grains such as buckwheat, millet, quinoa, and roasted root vegetables because they add substance to my diet. The biggest thing that I've changed about the way that I eat is I've added some animal products back into my diet. Growing up, I ate an entirely vegan diet for 18 years of my life. For 15 of those years, I was extremely strict and followed a 100% raw food diet. Though my rigid dietary choices initially helped me overcome my childhood health problems, they also eventually led me to develop several serious nutrient deficiencies. At a certain point, I could no longer deny that my diet wasn't serving me, so I started experimenting with farm-fresh animal products and regained my vibrancy once again. Presently, I eat eggs, fish, and poultry and think it's very important to source these things from small local farms where animals live happy lives and are treated well. Most of the animal products that I presently consume come from my friend's farm called Willow Wit Ranch. I've personally been on their property and can be certain that their animals are well cared for. My general stance on animal products is such, if you're going to eat eggs, fish, chicken, etc., it's a good idea to make sure that they are ethically raised. Every morning of this project, as well as every morning in general, I start with a green smoothie. Green smoothies have a wide array of health benefits. They're hydrating for the whole body. They provide good muscle and tissue repair. In my documentary, Powered by Green Smoothies, I followed around 10 athletes and made them drink a quart of green smoothie every single day. And we found that green smoothies help them to improve their endurance, help them recover better, and just help them feel all around awesome. So in this documentary, I'm definitely going to be using green smoothies as part of my meals. One of the things I want to talk about is I try to get all my clients in the pool. The pool is magical as far as strength, endurance, and flexibility. When you're doing a pool workout, you're basically doing thousands of core rotations. I cannot wait to get you in the pool. If you're re-engineering your body, a combination of strength training, functional training, and swimming will really give you incredible abs. Yep, keep that fingers. That's good. 
So you don't fight the water when you have this on, okay? You don't have to kick, so you're gonna be conserving energy because you still have like an eight beat kick. You're still wasting a lot of energy kicking. This is gonna keep the, the lower body on the surface because you wanna rotate on the surface, okay? And really focus on good rotation, turning your head to breathe, and try to get the timing down, okay? So let's try this. It's called the pull buoy. Don't think three-dimensionally where your hands are or anything like that because you'll freak yourself out. All right, thinking can be a dreadful affliction. <laughs> All right, rotation, and let's sum at 25. Breathe. Good, that's good. Last month, this was substantially bigger. This is my muffin top. And the month before that, it was even bigger. And so uh, this last month became soft, kind of jiggly, and then it just started to shrink, boom. I've also noticed uh, from working on my arms and my upper body, just bigger arms, bigger biceps, bigger pecs, stronger back. Today, I did my third body comp. Body comp, again, is where I measure my fat, my weight, and John does some calculations and kind of tells me where I'm at, how much further I need to go. And as of today, May 8th, I have dropped another 2.5% body fat. So that's about 8% total. I have uh, dropped about 14 pounds in weight and I've gained between 5 and 6 pounds of muscle. The last week though has been kind of challenging. I've been uh, having ups and downs in my mood and my energy, uh, feeling like, am I gonna get there? You know, Am I gonna have rock hard abs? After all, the documentary is called I Want Abs. And so it's critical that at the end of it, I have you know, a six pack that I could be proud of. One thing that's been happening repeatedly 
is uh, people have been coming up to me and saying, hey, you know, how are your abs going? Show me your abs. And when I lift up my shirt, reluctantly, <laughs> they're like, oh, you still have a ways to go. But the thing is that these folks, they haven't been with me ever, since day one. They haven't seen me firsthand, you know, naked at the start of the project. So they haven't seen the progress I've already made. And I'm still very much in the process of developing definition and showing abs. And that, that in itself has been kind of discouraging because it's kind of been like freaking me out. Like, will I make it? My plan of attack for that specifically now when people say, show me your abs, how's it going? I'm gonna tell them, if you wanna see my abs, you're gonna to have to purchase this movie because you ain't getting nothing for free. <laughs> I wonder sometimes if this documentary isn't lacking drama. Thus far, there hasn't been any drama. It's just been like positive all the way. And sure, there are days that are harder and there are days where I don't wanna work out but they're few and far between. And I can tell you this, that when I do go and work out and push through that, I just feel 100% better. You know, I didn't, I felt pretty crummy. I went to my workout, a couple BOSU flies into it, I felt better Then a couple more BOSU balls into it. I felt like incredible. And it's been a couple hours since that I'm recording this check-in. I still feel really good. I think I'm addicted now. I think I can't quit. And it's a very maintainable lifestyle that I've been living in the last couple months. And I think that ultimately when I get to the end of filming this documentary, I don't foresee myself changing a whole lot because I don't really miss anything <laughs> from how I used to do things. Like the food is awesome. The exercise is great. It's 95% positive and then the lows are to be expected. Our health and wellness is priceless. You can't put a value on this, which it blows my mind that some people, the first thing they go is their fitness program, their dietary intake. But this is like the most important thing because it enhances the human condition. So it's interesting that you bring that up because this week, what I've kind of run into over and over again is people coming up to me, they know that I'm doing this project, they try and lift up my shirt, which is a little intrusive. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, why are you doing this? Why are you working on your abs? There's so many other things that you could be working on. Like, isn't that a little conceited? And I gotta say, it's like been a little bit hard. It's kind of brought me down a little bit because I'm thinking like, I mean, am I doing something wrong here by working on my body? What interests me the most about those people who lift up your shirt and say, why are you doing this? is my counter to that is why would you not be doing this? Because your health and wellness is the most important thing on the planet. Mm -hmm. it's, it's way more important than stuff or money or anything else because if you don't have your health, you don't have anything. And I know what that's like. I remember lying in a hospital room for 22 days not having my health and wellness. Mm -hmm. And the, th the whole thing about being cut and having great abs, that's a byproduct of just being incredibly healthy. Mm -hmm. It's not conceited. Yeah, I think you're doing the world a service by being as fit and as healthy as possible because then you can operate on a higher level and you can help other people. So it's very non-conceited to be, to really work on your health and wellness because it helps everybody, it brings everybody up. So I don't understand that type of mentality and I think a lot of people, they don't get it. They don't get that, that, uh, that your health and wellness is everything and it enhances the human condition and that it truly is priceless. You can't put a price on it. Um, which is why <clears throat> what you're doing is the best investment anybody could ever make, mm -hmm. period. So, so let's start investing. I'm gonna do a little <laughs> interactive. I'm gonna throw the ball, that ball to you and you're gonna throw it back to me. That was great! Yeah! <laughs> so how's it feeling, man? Feeling good? Oh my goodness. 
That's why I recommend a personal trainer at least sometimes because few people can do that by themselves and I'm definitely not one of those people. So we have about 15 days left mm -hmm. until I'm supposed to be done, until we hit that three month mark. Yes. So one thing I'm noticing is that there's like, I'm developing more muscle definition. And I think I could get there, but it's starting to stress me out. So I'm thinking, should I add another month in order to really get, should I make it four months instead of three? Because the movie's called I Want Abs. Uh -huh. I want it to be indisputable. They're All right. you know, undisputed abs. And I think this is really good progress, but I think I could okay. go down even more. Yeah, well I think you've answered your question, my friend. So yes, let's do it. And you're, you're, you'd be up for getting a fourth month? I'm up for it. Hey, I, I am joyful to rip you apart at a cellular level, my friend. closer to my after picture, I'm realizing that even though I'm developing pretty good muscle definition, I'm gonna need to be able to flex correctly in order to show it off. I need some help posing. I need, a, I need some help figuring out how best to flex to display my muscles. Better. Absolutely. Oh good. I love helping with that. And so I was hoping that I could pick your brain and just kind of, yeah. you know, you help me out with that? Absolutely. Let's do it. Sweet. Do it. So just like flex your abs for me. So yeah, just act like you like you're all like heated, like ready to beat someone up. Yeah. Let's talk about your lats because in bodybuilding, you're trying to give the impression that you have a small waist and a big back. Mm -hmm. Your lats are right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So they come all the way down your back like this, right? And they come down. So when you take a big breath and you fill it up, you can feel this muscle, right? Kind of start mm -hmm. to engage and poke out. That's what you're trying to look for. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing here with your bicep. So lots, you'll see lots of bodybuilders do this little hand thing because that helps them kind of flex it a little bit more. If you suck in and pull up, yeah, can you make your belly button come up a little bit? Mm -hmm. That's about it, right? Yeah, so, but all of that popped, do you see that? All your little scalenes went whoop, 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 yep. And you can see, where am I at? You can see your line down here as it starts to come in. There you go, there you go. Do you see that definition and that one? Mm -hmm. okay. okay, we're gonna have a pose down right now. Okay, are you ready for this? I'm ready for this. Okay, let's do, do it, let's Good walk luck. in. Good luck. Ooh, okay. Biceps. Perfect. And then turn to the side. Yep, and then turn all the way back. Do your back with no arms. Just breathe into it. Remember to just hold, open that up, open that up. Oh yeah, that's the difference. Now bring your biceps up. Good, and then let's turn all the way to the other side again. Find that tricep and roll it back. Get a smile pretty at the judges. Yeah, and if you're a girl, you'd be like, hey, and if you're a guy, you'd be like, what up? <laughs> and then you'd walk off stage. My food portions since the beginning of this project have shrank. I'm finding that it takes a lot less food to keep me fueled throughout the day. And this happened naturally. I didn't force myself to eat smaller meals. I've also learned that it's just as important when you eat as what you eat. I eat a solid breakfast. I eat a snack in between breakfast and lunch. Most days I'll eat two lunches a couple hours apart because that enables me to shrink my uh, portion size. Then I eat another snack and then I eat dinner and that's it. On top of eating really healthy food, I've drastically changed the timing of when my meals hit my body 
And that has been an incredible thing to witness. It's, the energy levels are incredible. And I just feel light on my feet all the time. I never have that feeling of heaviness. And I always have this feeling that I could just get up and run. And that feels good. As far as the workouts themselves are concerned, I noticed a shift at the beginning of the month. At the start of this month, there were still days when I had to kind of drag my heels a little bit. It wasn't always pleasant. And then something happened and now they're my favorite part of the day. At the beginning, when I started this project, I had no idea what it takes to get abs. That's why I'm making this movie. I wanted to find out. And as it turns out, it's a lot easier than I thought initially. My initial thoughts and concerns were that I'd have to be exercising five hours a day and that it would be unpleasant and that I'd have to eat a highly restrictive diet. But the recipe for abs is actually quite simple. The recipe for abs is a good diet plus good program design and consistency. And that's it. Good program design, in my opinion, is first and foremost something that's fun, that you enjoy doing, and it's also functional fitness. So I'm not just lifting weights in one fashion. I'm lifting weights in a way that I'm using stabilizing muscles and I will be able to apply those exercises into real life. For example, when I do yoga ball work or BOSU ball work, I'm using stabilizing muscles in my core that I can then use when I go surfing. You know, it's exercising that helps the real world. I think it's very important to find stuff that you're excited about. John helps me do core work. He makes it fun. It's not just doing sit-ups, boring sit-ups. He makes everything fun. We do a lot of different exercises that keeps me engaged. I found Nick, he teaches kettlebells. Kettlebells add an element of danger into my workouts because obviously you have this big heavy kettlebell and you have to be mindful and not drop it on your foot or your face. I actually find that with kettlebells I work out and I'm so focused on being careful that the workout can just run by quickly and I don't even notice the time fly by. So, Good program design for me is functional fitness and to find things that you enjoy. We all have big egos. We all want to grab the big weights. We get to the gym and it's like, I'm not going to grab the 10 pounders. I want the 30 pounders. And that's the zone where you get hurt. And if you get hurt, you can't keep doing workouts. You can't keep working on your body. So one thing that John has been very helpful in helping me understand is that it's important to start light. At the beginning of this experiment, he would give me 10 or 12 pound weights and I'd be doing curls or butterflies and I was like, thank God I'm in this gym alone because this is embarrassing. But the thing about it is it, it built my muscles incrementally and now I'm at the point where I'm using 30 pound weights and not only does it not feel heavy, but it feels safe. My body can accommodate that weight. And building off that, I think it's important in the beginning to have a personal trainer because a personal trainer adds a level of accountability. I notice for myself, it's a lot harder to do something for me than it is for somebody else. And so when I know that John is coming, when I know that I've paid John for my workout, I sort of have no choice but to go. Hiring a trainer isn't cost effective for everybody, but I think that it is a very good tool in the beginning uh, because it makes you go to the workouts and it helps you form that healthy pattern. On that note of having a personal trainer, it's also worth mentioning that it's very difficult to find a good trainer and it's absolutely imperative that you find a good trainer. When you choose a personal trainer, make sure that you interview them, ask them specific questions based off the results that you want to attain. Like, are you confident that I'm going to have abs? Or are you confident that I'm going to build upper body strength? And based off how they respond, you'll know if they are the right trainer or the wrong trainer for you. My friends were concerned that this project was driven by vanity and that I would become more vain the fitter I got. But I've actually learned that the opposite is true. Before when I was a little bit overweight, was pudgy, I found that I was constantly stressed and concerned with how I looked. I was always looking in the mirror and making sure that my hair looked good, that I was wearing clothes that concealed my shape. It was like an a perpetual thing. I was always like, don't take pictures of me or do I look good in that picture? Whereas now I look in the mirror and my reflection that's looking back at me is an awesome reflection and I love it. And I find that 
I'm just so much less stressed. I'm able to just go on with my day and I'm not concerned about any of it. I don't care what I'm wearing, where I'm going, who's taking pictures of me. I'm just free. Okay, so the place that I'm at, if you're smart, you can guess where that is. It just expanded its organic section, so it's a great place to come to buy inexpensive organic food. If I were to shop for these things at my local health food store, I would spend thousands upon thousands of dollars. So when I come to a place like this, it's an easy way to get really good food and save a little cash. I'm just cruising around the store talking to myself about various fruits and vegetables and people are looking at me crazy like what's he doing just talking to himself and I think that may be a good strategy for next time would be to wear some Bluetooth or like Apple headphones so people just think I'm on the phone Why? and I'm not crazy so check it out I got a whole cartload of food I got some mangoes, I got oranges, I got pineapples, celery, tomatoes, cherries, avocados, and I only spent $139.76. This cart of food at a health food store would have easily cost 400 bucks. So that's how I shop.
I think it's like this. <laughs> After four months of consistent training, my coach John suggested that I put my fitness to the ultimate test by competing in a triathlon. Unlike other races, triathlons require participants to swim, bike, and run, thus challenging every muscle in the body. I was extremely apprehensive to compete in anything, let alone a triathlon. But after constant persuasion from John, I agreed to try it. And the results were better than I could have ever expected. There was a point when I was running the last leg of the race when I was no longer passing people. I remember thinking, man, the guy in front of me must have a big lead over me. I don't think I'll be able to catch him. Shortly thereafter, I crossed the finish line and split the ribbon with my body. I came in first place. There was nobody ahead of me. Booyah! So this is the after photo shoot. And this marks the end of the project. This is the last thing that we're gonna shoot. What up, Jared? Hey, Sergey. How's it going? Yeah, welcome. Good to see you, man. Good, man. Come on in. Bonnie and I are just checking out some of the stuff we did from the, uh, the previous shoot. Cool, well, let me hop into my Speedo and uh, we'll go from there. Cool, let's do it. Take some after. All right. In my upbringing, I was taught that when you want to lose weight, you have to fast. And I think this is a very common belief. And what I learned over the last four months is, is that this belief isn't necessarily true because I lost weight through eating. One of my major takeaways in this project has been that it's just as important when you eat as what you eat. Because I would eat breakfast religiously every morning and then from that point on eat every two hours until 7 p.m. 
My metabolism experienced a spike. My blood sugar stayed level and consistent throughout the day. And I was able to lose weight, lose fat naturally without stretch marks consistently. I lost about four pounds a month. That's a huge, huge eye opener for me that you don't have to starve yourself or deplete yourself of calories to lose weight. You actually have to eat. People always say that you should love yourself, but what does that really mean? When I started this project, I got all sorts of different comments. Some people would say, it's so awesome that you're doing this, good job. Other people would say, why are you wasting your time? This is so superficial. You shouldn't be working on your abs. There are many other causes that are much better than this. And I learned that choosing healthy habits over unhealthy habits is an act of true love to yourself. So when I choose to eat healthy food, when I choose to go to the gym regularly, I'm giving myself a big, big hug. I'm actually doing something very pleasant, very loving for myself, for my body. And that, that in and of itself, that choice to do something healthy repeatedly is how I lift my own self-esteem. When I was going into this project, I had pretty big expectations. My expectations initially were that I was gonna get really fit, that I would start noticing you know, more definition right away. And I had a little bit of a freak out a month or two in when I'd been working out for a solid 30, 40 days. And I started feeling stronger, but nothing was changing. I was still kind of pudgy in the gut. I didn't have as much definition in the arms as I would have wanted to. And I had this mini panic, like the three month mark is coming up. I'm supposed to have figured some stuff out by now, but I'm not. Is it working? And so then I had a meeting with my film crew and we decided to extend the project for another month, make it four months instead of three. And it wasn't until the third month that I really started noticing the difference. The fat really started melting, that the muscle definition started showing up. I had these expectations for fast results and instead what I got was slow and steady results. This is something that's very important to mention, I think, because often people will start going to the gym in January. It's called the January effect and they have all this you know, desire to, to live a better year. They have all these New Year's resolutions. And a month into it, when they don't see any results, they all quit. Had those people not quit on the first, but taken it another month, month and a half, that's when the results start showing up. So it's a much more gradual process, unfortunately. But you know what? What's the rush? Once you get fit, you can maintain it for the rest of your life. It's not really a race. Enjoy the process. Four months ago, being fit was no more than a dream. It seemed impossible and completely out of my reach. At the start of this project, the title of this movie, I Want Abs, described my most honest desire to get in shape and figure out if the effort was worth it. Today, I can attest that the effort is worth it. During the making of this film, I learned that the process of getting fit was much easier than I expected and that the lifestyle change was a pleasant one. The transformation of my body was accompanied by elevated self-esteem, stronger willpower, and a lot more happiness. Walking through life in a fit body is a completely different experience than in a body that's out of shape. It's absolutely awesome, and I highly recommend it. I feel alert and ready for whatever life throws my way, and this is an incredible feeling. So what's the secret to getting abs? One hour of vigorous exercise, three to five times per week, eating six small meals that consist of healthy ingredients daily, not eating late at night, and being consistent. It's that simple. This project helped me realize that it's just as difficult and expensive to get out of shape as it is to get in shape. In order to get out of shape, one must regularly purchase cookies and other expensive junk foods, spend countless tedious hours in sedentary poses, and put up with all the physical and emotional limitations of such a lifestyle. By contrast, being fit requires a trainer, a gym membership, and time to achieve results. But unlike being out of shape, the side effects of living a healthy lifestyle are only positive. 
Any one person is only 20, 40, or 100 workouts away from being in the best shape of their lives. You're going to live those days anyway, so why not invest into a better future for yourself? It's daunting to start, and the results show up gradually. That's why I encourage you to enjoy the process and trust that you'll get there. And most importantly, don't stop. Okay, so we're heading to the flat top where I'm gonna finally shave. I've been wearing a beard for quite a long time. At the start of the movie, I told you that I was growing out a, a beard to show progression and time. And now I'm going full circle. I have abs, I have a beard, and I want my face back. I've recruited three friends who are gonna help me pick a new facial hairstyle. So, this is the beard cut. <laughs> Throw a beard on your ass to show progression to the time. <laughs> the right is right. There you stay in the car. There you go. There you go. Wait, 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 wait. Just sit down, you guys. And go, Sergey. Chris, what up? It's morning. How you doing? Good morning. I'm doing great. So what are we doing today? I'm gonna to give you full creative license, just cut my beard off however you see fit. Okay, sounds good. 